The aristocrats gathered in the Count's banquet hall, since a gala reception was planned that evening. Well, when a girl with red hair came in, all the young guys paid attention to her. A gentleman with blonde hair kisses the girl's hand and says that she is beautiful today, as always. And another man claims that she is not as beautiful as she is interesting, and then he touches her hair. At this time, the younger brother was watching them and said that his sister was good, and he, as her relative, knows this very well. At this time, the main character, being between the young guys, thought that it was difficult for her to breathe. But suddenly, she saw a handsome guy with dark hair. He came up to her and took her in his arms and said that he was very happy because he met her. A young girl wonders what this damn boss makes her work every day, and he instructs her to do monthly overtime reports. The main character, after graduating from university, joined the so-called Black Company, which practices an unacceptable, exploitative employment system. And she recalls that more than half of her colleagues have already quit at this company. The girl understands that the number is falling, but there is a lot of work and she must work for several people. At the end of the working day, she drank a bottle, and she thought that she was already accustomed to corporate life. And sometimes it can even be fun, even if tiring. Sometimes she will think that she does not understand where she took a wrong turn. Lying in her bed, the main character thought that tomorrow was finally a day off, and so she could rest, and also relax and have a drink. The lady dreams that she would like to be in another world, because she thought that maybe her life would not be so difficult. The next day, the girl opened her eyes and looked out the window, and thought that it was already morning, since there was a lot of light in the room. But suddenly, she doesn't understand where she is, because it's someone else's room. And the girl doesn't understand where she is. But when she looked at her hands, she doesn't understand why her fingers are so thin. At this time, she heard that the maid was saying that the mistress had woken up too, so they needed to call people. When the main character found herself alone in the room, she went up to the mirror and, as it turned out, her hair was a different color. And in the mirror there is a completely different person, and even more beautiful than her. The lady thought that this was a dream, and she was sleeping, and she kept dreaming about it. But suddenly the main character realizes that she is Christina Fonluck, is a freedom-loving and selfish girl, which harasses servants and lower nobility, and also changes the course of all events, and is fond of smuggling. There were rumors about Christina that she was harassing other people's suitors, and she also committed many other atrocities. The main character was a bad girl who everyone hated. At this time, the girl looks at herself in the mirror and asks if this is all true. Because the current memories of this Christine's body, she realizes that she has taken possession of Christine's body. The girl understands that she did this precisely after all her atrocities, and then she remembers that she read some book about this and everyone moved into other people's bodies before the fateful events. The main character does not remember how she died and what happened to her body. At this time, a maid enters the room and reports that she has brought a doctor, and the doctor asks if the young lady has come to her senses. The lady says she has a headache. The doctor explains that it's because she fell down the stairs and then asks if she doesn't remember it. At this time, the girl thought that she had fallen from the stairs, and that was probably why her head and whole body hurt. And she realizes that she doesn't remember what happened before or after this. I'm ashamed to admit it to her, but she really doesn't remember anything. The doctor reports that it may be shock after a fall, and she claims that her speech has changed a little. Hearing this, Christina says that he is right, and she thinks that she just needs some rest. Then she asks if she is saying the right thing. At this time, the girl thought that she would not be mistaken if she said that she was a hostage in someone else's body, and it seems to her that she is going crazy, and at this time she understands that Christina was already crazy. The doctor agrees with the girl and says that he also thinks so. Christina looked at the maid and saw that she was trembling, and at that time I thought that the mistress was mocking her servants, and therefore such a reaction is not surprising. The girl with red hair asks how long she slept. 
The maid replies that it was three days, and they did not see any serious injuries, but she did not regain consciousness for a long time. Hearing this, the main character thought that she had slept for three days and therefore wanted to eat. Suddenly a knight enters the room and then turns to the lady and says that they have strict orders from his majesty, and he must immediately escort her to the royal castle. The knight says that it looks like this three-day incident is finally over, and then he says that the lady must understand that she will not escape her fate. Hearing this, Christina says that she fell that day and lost her memory, and therefore does not understand what she should do now. The emperor turns to the girl and says that the daughter of the Marquis of Fonluca has already arrived, and then asks if she understands why he called her. Christina looks at his majesty in surprise and says that she does not understand anything. And then she explains that she fell down the stairs three days ago and doesn't seem to remember what happened before or after. At this time, the crown prince enters the room and reports that this does not matter, even if it turns out to be true. Hearing, this girl thought that this person knew that Christina was the fiancé of the current Crown Prince Philip. The fair-haired gentleman claims that the fact that she does not remember this does not mean that her sins no longer exist. The Crown Prince reports that three days ago, at about two o'clock in the afternoon, the Marquise's daughter pushed Priscilla Eller down the staircase, who fortunately remained unharmed. The gentleman claims that up to this point she had not caused harm to people, and although they did not pay attention to her, she took advantage of the social status of the baron's daughter. The crown prince reports that this will not help now, and he will punish her. At this time, the main character thought that she was sure that there was a crime in which Priscilla was involved, and she was the daughter of a commoner baron. The girl remembers that Christina told her something caustic and sarcastic, and that Priscilla has no manners, and she tried to kill her with her own hands out of hatred. And then the girl apologizes and says that this is probably a misunderstanding. But the prince confidently answers her that there is also testimony from Lady Priscilla. The main character objects and says that she is fine, and then suggests that they better double-check everything. And at that time, I thought that her words were condemned. Christina asks what punishment awaits her. His Majesty says that Miss Priscilla was not harmed, but, however, they consider her dangerous and so that she does not commit any more evil, they will keep an eye on her. Hearing this, this girl thought that this was impossible, and then she saw a black-haired guy in a knight's uniform who addressed her and said that they had not seen each other for a long time, and from that day on, they would live together. Christina reflects on the fact that he will constantly monitor her, and this is unpleasant for her. And then she offers to wait and says that in the Marquise's house, they will look after her anyway. And a few minutes later, she says that they will bribe Mr. Servant. Suddenly, the main character realized that only the original Christina could do this. The man reveals that his decision gives her the right to execute her. Hearing this, this girl became excited. However, the black-haired guy reports that memory loss is a lie, and he will soon find out about it. Sitting in the carriage, the main character understands whether she will live or die, and everything depends on this guy who is with her. The girl recalls that after breaking off her engagement to Philip, Christina had her eye on the next contender, Cedric, the next head of the ducal family. The lady looked at the guy, and she doesn't understand why she has such a beautiful face. And then he remembers that Christina ran after him, and in order to attract his attention to herself, she almost fell into hysterics. And Cedric clearly hated her. The main character understands that, in other words, her current favorability rating is very low, and she wouldn't be surprised if she was accused of something else. The girl reflects on the fact that even in this unknown world, Life is also harsh, and she thought it would be even more difficult. When they arrived at Cedric's house, the young gentleman helped the lady get out of the carriage. When Christina saw his house, she thought that it was very huge and even larger than hers. And it is not surprising that Cedric, the heir of the duke, the butler turns to his master and greets him, and then he says he's glad he's back. The servant asks what the master will order to do with the girl. He replies that he can take the girl to her room. The butler turns to the lady and informs her that he will show her around. And at that time, the girl thought that if this is not a prison, then everything is in order. 
The servant reports that from now on she will live in this house and will have her own personal room. Christina looked at the room and said that she could live in a smaller one. However, the butler explains that this is an order from his master, Cedric, and then he shows her the bells and says that she can ring it if she needs something. The servant informs her that there are clothes and other things she needs in the closet, and then he asks her to wait for them and not leave the room. Hearing this, the girl reflects that she does not feel welcome and thinks that they know the reason why she came. She needs to wait there, like a criminal for execution. When Christina opened the closet, she saw a lot of clothes and she was surprised. At this time, a maid comes into the room and then asks the mistress what's the matter. Hearing the question, the main character got scared. The maid saw her scared and then asks for forgiveness and explains that she knocked but she did not answer. Christina explains that she is simply amazed by this place. Hearing this, the maid thought that the mistress would grab dresses and then announce that she would bring more and then leave the room. The young lady, screaming, turns to her and tells her to wait and then says that, on the contrary, these dresses are enough and even too much. The maid stops and then reveals that she is her personal maid and her name is Hannah. Christina says she's glad to meet you, but when the maid looked at her, she asked if she looked unfriendly, and then he tells her not to worry, because her facial expressions are dead. At this time, the main character thought that she had a strange maid, and therefore she was her personal one, and she also feels a little uncomfortable. Hannah, she says that she will show her the prepared dishes, and reports that Mr. Cedric is already waiting for her. When the girl sat down at the table, she saw a lot of delicious prepared food, and then I started trying it. And at that time, she thought that she would never have eaten like that with her salary, and that's why she feels happy. Suddenly, the main character thought that she felt Cedric's gaze on her, and at this time, she could not believe what she had done, and believed that she had lost her dignity at the table. The young master turns to the girl and claims that she liked it, Christina replies that it is very tasty and they don't cook it in her palace. After these words, Cedric did not say anything, and the girl thought that the silence scared her. And then he says that the room is wonderful and has beautiful dresses, and thanks him. The dark-haired guy says that even though she is a criminal, she is still his guest. At this time, the main character reflects that all this time she thought that they would treat her badly. Cedric gets up and asks for forgiveness and then says that she need not worry and leaves. When the main character is left alone, she does not understand what she should do now and reflects on the fact that as long as she is under supervision, the situation will not change. But she understands that if she sits idly by, then perhaps her pretty little head will soon end up in the ground and then she eats the cooked steak. The girl with red hair is puzzled by the question of what a young lady like Christina usually does. And then she remembers that she only played every day. I thought that maybe Christina didn't do anything. At this time, the main character thought that if she were in her place, she would have already died of boredom. Suddenly, the main character decided what she would do and how she would occupy her time. Christina took a broom and started cleaning. Cedric looked at the girl in surprise and asked what she was doing. The young mistress reports that she is cleaning as he sees. However, the young master claims that he is telling me this, and then asks why she is doing this. And the girl explains that she had free time. Hearing this, the gentleman asks what it has to do with cleaning. Christina replies that she thinks the job is a better fit for her. And then she remembers that when she took a break from the company, she became a scapegoat. The young master heard this and said that he did not understand what she was talking about. And grandfather remembers that she always mocked the servants. The main character says that she has free time and let him believe that she is clearing karma. Cedric says that this is the first time he has heard that she considers herself guilty, and the lady reports that she finally understood everything. Christina claims that she knows that she cannot undo all the bad things that she has done, but nevertheless she would like to do something, and then asks if this is bad. The young master says that she can do whatever she wants, and then turns around and leaves. Cedric tells the butler that she said that she wants to work, and therefore he should leave her alone, since he is sure that she will quickly get bored with it. The butler agrees with his master, and then he suggests asking Hannah to take care of her. 
At this time, Christina thought that when she saw him, she changed her mind because she hoped that he would be at least a little impressed. And then she confidently says that she won't get bored with it and continues cleaning. A month later, the main character is still doing the same job. The maid says Mistress Christina did a great job and then asks if she can go take a nap. However, Christina invites her to wait and at this time thought that a month had passed since her arrival at the mansion and she had taken control of the servant's work and she realizes that she must be suitable for this job. The main character realized some more things. And first of all, there are too few servants for such a mansion. And she understands that apparently, this is because Cedric does not like living among a lot of people. Christina knows that he rarely leaves his room and does not leave his grandfather, the duke of this family, because they say that Cedric will soon be given the title. The main character wanted to use magic, but realized that she could not use it. The girl knows that magic exists in this world, but she cannot use it at all. She also wonders why Christina doesn't have magic. The girl with red hair thought that she could cope with this without magic, and then she climbs up the tree to catch the drawing that Sebastian the head butler drew. Christina looked at the drawing and saw Cedric on it, and at that time she thought that she could not believe that Sebastian had such a hobby. Sitting on a tree, the lady saw Cedric and thought that the original was already here, and then she decided to hide. Suddenly one of the girl's legs slipped and she fell to the ground. Well, when I opened my eyes, I saw that I was lying on top of Cedric. Christina asks for forgiveness, and at this time he takes her hand and turns it over, and then lies down on her. When the young master stood up, he explains that this is a conditioned reflex of a knight, and it will die on the battlefield if it is not sharpened. The main character runs away and says that they will see each other later, and she understands that this is bad for her heart. When the gentleman entered the room, that butler asks why he blushed. But Cedric replies that it is his imagination. Hearing this, the butler thought about adding it to the drawing later. Cedric turns to the servant and says that he will go out for a while and leave everything to him. And Sebastian wonders where he's going and then asks about it. The young master replies that he is going to the castle for another report about Christina. A few hours later, Cedric is talking with the prince. Philip asks if he heard from Christina about the secret place. Cedric says not yet, and the prince wonders what she did while she lived with him for a month. The young master explains that he was reporting this letter. Hearing this, the prince remembers that she is pretending to be a servant and then asks about it. The prince says that redemption is her business and is sure that there has never been such a Christina. However, Cedric is sure that this is not the case. Philip explains that he does not have time for this and therefore he will not calm down and he invites Cedric to find out where the Book of Magic is, and as soon as possible he understands that he won't be able to hide it for long. The Book of Magic is the legacy of the great wizard who created this country. It contains a legend of the end, and when the Book of Magic is opened, the chosen person will appear. The prince reports that the Books of Magic have disappeared from a carefully guarded place, and the only clue is the appearance of Christina there, and probably all she is is a thief. Cedric says that an arrest cannot be made just because of the testimony of an eyewitness. The prince asks if he needs hard evidence and then asks not to, because it's so obvious. The Marquis of Von Luke and his family are overprotective of their daughter, which is very troublesome. But the prince reads that the observation and he will not treat her badly, because Christina is a sensitive child. Philip reports that he wants to avoid further deterioration of the relationship between the families. Cedric says that the reason for the deterioration of the relationship is probably the breakup of his engagement with Christina. Having heard this, this prince asks him not to remind him of this. And then he reports that Christina was very interested in him. The prince asks if Cedric and Christine can become friends. However, the young master did not answer, and the prince asks what he said. Cedric asks how they should become friends. Philip says that he can give her a gift or invite her to have lunch together, and also smile at her and do just what is in his power. Hearing this, the young master remembers how she did the cleaning, and he understands that there has never been such a Christina. Cedric is sure that she is the daughter of the Marquis because he checked her, 
but he reflects on the fact that from what he heard, she is a completely different person, and she's selfish and arrogant. And the young master doesn't understand how Christina is now working with undying enthusiasm, and she is a hard-working bee that he can't take his eyes off. Cedric remembers that when he saw her on a tree, and then noticed that she was falling from running up to her to catch her. When the young gentleman was driving home, sitting in the carriage, he reflected on the fact that until that moment, Christina had been different. After all, she was surprised when she saw in her room his wardrobe, which he had made for her. The next day, Mr. Cedric bought a lot of dresses and shoes for the girl. Seeing this, the main character was surprised, and the maid reports that Cedric gave her a gift. Christina, screaming, says that this is stressing her out, since she understands that it is not her birthday, and she is frightened by his intentions. The maid reports that she loves gifts, and therefore thinks that this might be the case. However, the young lady objects and says that this will not work, and at that time I thought that this could be a gift before her death. Christina ponders that maybe that fall had something to do with it. Suddenly, a young gentleman enters the room, and when she saw him, the girl was surprised. Cedric asks if she likes his gifts, but the main character replies that it is not that important, and then says that she is very glad. The gentleman invites her not to suffer, and tells her that if she doesn't like it, she can just say so. Christina explains that she can't say she doesn't like it, but she won't even wear half of it. Cedric invites the girl to eat together, and he would also like to have breakfast, lunch, and dinner with her. Hearing this, the Marquise was surprised. Sitting at the table, the main character thought that she was having deja vu, and then asked that she needed to do something. The young master replies that it doesn't matter and explains that, simply put, her job is to spend time with him. Having heard this, the main character thought that she did not expect this. And at that time, she thought that she was definitely not Christina. And then she says that it is pleasant and calm for her to have lunch with someone. The Marquise wondered if he was always alone in such an empty place. When the maid was combing Christina's hair, she asks her why Cedric decided to have lunch with her. And she says that she often sees that she is looking after them while they work. Hannah talks about how she's proud to be following her. This girl was surprised when she heard, and then claims that she is going there too. The maid reports that this is half a joke, and the main character claims that it is very difficult to understand. Hannah says that she thinks that the young master wants to get along with the marchioness. Hearing this, the main character objects and says that this cannot be. The girl reflects that even if she told him about this, it would be rude. And although she had not been polite before, it seems that she will continue to live with him. Christina thought that she would not run away and would do everything possible to make sure they got along. While sitting at dinner, the girl asks the young master if his parents live with him. He replies that they died, and after a little more silence, he leaves and says that they will see each other later. When the girl was left alone, she thought about how she could ask this with such a face. After all, she understands that they are not even good friends and she realizes that she needs to apologize. When Christina went out into the corridor, she saw Sebastian and said that now was the time for explanations. The butler reports that he understands what's going on, and he can tell her about Cedric's parents, and then asks if she is ready to learn the secrets and feelings of other people. The main character explains that she decided to get to know him better and not run away from him, and then she reportedly looked sad somehow. Sebastian tells her to listen, and then reveals that Cedric's parents' marriage was politically advantageous. And after the birth of the master, the parents stopped playing their roles and separated. Cedric was taken in by his grandfather, the Duke, whom he had never seen, and instead of being kind to his grandson, he strictly raised him as a future heir. Rather, Cedric's parents died in a horse-drawn carriage due to an accident and grown-up Cedric cannot love or be loved just like a lonely person. Sebastian reports that this is how he sees it. At this time, the main character thought that perhaps they were similar, and the butler says he hopes everything will be fine. At this time, the young master hears a knock on the door and hears Christina's voice, and then he invites her to come in. The girl says that she has something that she wants to give him. The Marquise asks for forgiveness for yesterday and gives her a bag. 
However, the gentleman assures him that he shouldn't, and then says that he too acted immaturely since he got up and left. However, the girl objects and says that she was the one who went where she shouldn't. Christina gives him the bag, and he asks what it is. The girl explains that it may not look very good, but it should be tasty. Cedric sees the cookies and asks if she made them herself, and the lady replies that she tried for him. Hearing this, the guy was surprised. The main character explains that as a child she always wanted to do something. And at this time, the girl remembers that when she was little, her father and mother went to her older brother's concert, and she was told to sit alone. When she drew the picture, she showed it to her mother, but she didn't even look and said that she was preparing for her brother's birthday, and therefore suggested that she be a good girl and not interfere. Christina recalls that as a child, her parents always loved her brother more, but they did not pay attention to her. At this time, the gentleman ate the cookies, and the girl asked if they were tasty. He replies that it's delicious, and she says that she's glad to hear that. When the girl returned to her room, she thought that she was very happy, because he looked pleased. And at this time it seemed to her that their relationship had improved a little. Suddenly, Christina felt pain in her chest. She felt like she couldn't breathe and then fell to the floor, screaming for help. After some time, the main character was examined by a doctor and said that he could not do anything about it. However, Cedric reports that he is incompetent and therefore turns to Sebastian to see another doctor. Hearing this, the doctor says that if he can't do anything, it means this is the wrong area, and this is parting magic. Cedric asks in surprise what this means. The doctor answers that this is a very rare disease, and then he reminds him that he was kicked out of the wizards of the royal court because he was disturbing everyone. The young master says that he should not get into trouble if he wants to become a member of the royal court, and then he offers to explain faster. Hearing this, the doctor says that he has no friends because of this, and then he explains that, as the name suggests, sprawling magic is a disease in which the magic within a person gets out of control, and the cause of the disease is unknown. The doctor reports that all he knows is severe pain, as if the body is being torn apart, causing difficulty breathing, and in some cases, the pain is unbearable and leads to death. Hearing this, the gentleman was surprised, and then claims that Christina does not have magic, and asks if he knows about it. The doctor explains that even if this is the case, the pain goes away only when you lose control over the magic, and if this continues, she will die. Cedric asks how he can help her. The doctor replies that she needs to stabilize her condition by infusing him with magic, and if everything is done correctly, she will wake up. The doctor explains that this may be dangerous, but it is often practiced among wizards, and then he guarantees 100% success. Hearing this, the young master asks what he is waiting for. However, he. She claims that the gentleman did not say to treat her, and then asks if he is sure of this, given that she is a criminal, and she was also kicked out because she was in the way. Cedric asks in surprise if he is offering him to kill Christina. And then he says that he cannot leave her in this state, since she has not yet told him about the Book of Magic, and then he tells him to treat her. At this time, the magician thought that he was a callous person, who did not pay attention to others, and he wondered how he now felt towards the person who made him feel something. At this time, the main character, being in the camp of sleep, follows the stairs, but suddenly it seemed to her that she had fallen and died. And this happened in an unknown world where she tried to live correctly. But suddenly the girl saw a woman with blonde hair and white clothes who welcomed Christina back, and then asked if she should call her Sarah. The surprised main character asks what she is talking about. The unfamiliar woman smiled and then said that she would soon understand everything. The girl asks if they have met before, but the woman does not answer but gives her a round, shining circle, and informs her that this award is for her important work. Heard this, she was surprised, and then said that this was the first time she had seen this. The stranger claims that this is her past self, and then asks her not to lose her. Suddenly, the woman disappeared, but the main character, screaming, asks her to wait, and then asks what it all means, and she wonders what awaits her next. At this time, the main character opens her eyes and says that she is still alive. 
The doctor smiles and says that this is the first time he has seen such an interesting reaction. And then he says that he is Cyril, the royal doctor and wizard, and then asks if she is the same problematic Christina. At this time, the girl thought that she was seeing him for the first time, and then asked what he was doing here. The magician explains that a magical explosion occurred in her, and this rarely happens to people with great magical power. Hearing this, the Marquise is surprised and claims that this body has no magical powers. And the magician agrees with her and says that this should not have happened. But it seems to him that this has already happened. At this time, Christina thought that it might be because of that strange dream, and she returned. The doctor tells her that she should use magic to calm down, and then says that if she continues to be in this state, she will soon die. Suddenly, Cedric comes into the room and he asks Christina if she's okay. The girl replies that she is fine and then asks if he was worried about her. The young master reports that she was unconscious for three days, and the doctor claims that they usually sleep for about a day, and everyone was very worried about this. The main character talks about how she slept for so long again, and then remembers that when she fell down the stairs, she also slept for so long. And at that time, I thought that it was all about that dream. The butler says it's good that she woke up, and Hannah asks if that little tornado in Mr. Cedric's room is also magic. The wizard says that she said everything correctly and then explains that his hurricane can surprise. Sebastian reveals that because of him all the furniture is broken and he will have to pay for it. Hearing this, the doctor turns to Christina and then touches her head and asks how she is. However, the Marquise does not understand what this is and asks about it. The magician says that Christina began to use white magic. The girl was surprised when she heard this and said that this was the first time she had heard about it. The wizard explains that white magic can only be received by those people who are blessed by the moon, and this magic consists of only four elements. Hearing this, the main character thought that this was bad. Since the story was developing, she did not understand anything at all. The Marquise apologizes and then says that she cannot use magic because she knows nothing about it and then asks if they can explain it to her like a child. The wizard explains that in this world, 80% of people are born with some ability, and if she doesn't have enough magic, then she can only use it in simple matters. Because of this, most people use various tools rather than simple magic. The doctor reports that Cedric uses magic instead of matches, and then he smiles and says that most people do that. Mac reports that the other 10% of people are born without magic like her, and the remaining 10% are people with enormous magical power like him. The doctor says that no matter how much strength she has, it takes a long time to develop, and then explains that his hurricane is remote magic. Hearing this, the Marquise thought that magic was not a necessary thing for her, and that it was better to use tools. The wizard reports that everything is written on Christina's face. And then he says that like all people with magical abilities, she received the blessing of one of the four elements of water, wind, earth, or fire. The Marquis says that it is the moon. The doctor believes that since she received the blessing of the moon, this means that all the elements are subject to her. And he only saw this in books. The magician invites the girl to pick up a leaf and point out that it is growing in her hands. When the main character imagined this, suddenly she had a flower in her hands in a few seconds. We'll see. The wizard says that he thinks she can use the magic of restoration and healing. At this time, Christina thought that she could not believe it, that she was the only healer in the world. The doctor says that from now on, he will make sure that she controls her magic. After all, who knows, maybe it will get out of control and destroy everything around. The girl asks if she can do it, and then reveals that she has never used magic before. The magician assures that everything is in order, and he will teach her, since she is the owner of her magic. Hearing this, the young master says that he can teach her too. The doctor asks what he is best at, and then he says that he is in his dreams and asks for forgiveness, but he does not think that he will be able to train her, because he only controls fire. Cedric claims that he will take care of her. The magician asks what will happen if Christina feels pain again, and he himself is interested in this. The wizard says that he will teach her the basics of magic and therefore asks everyone to leave the room. The doctor turns to the girl and asks if she is ready to start, 
and when she answered that she was ready, he asks her who she is, and then he comes closer to her face and looks at her intently. The girl replies that she is Christina, and at that time she thought about what would happen if they found out that she was from another world, and then he imagines that this is the end. The wizard states that her current soul nature is different from what he has encountered previously. However, the girl does not understand what he is talking about, and the magician explains that when a flower emerges from a seed, it is already known what will grow from it. And he claims that in the same way magic is determined by the soul. The magician believes that she carried a seed in her soul that was not destined to blossom, but since it has now blossomed, it means she is a different person. And then she says that she cannot deceive him since his eyes are different from the eyes of other people. The main character realizes that he is not the same person and then tells how it really happened. Hearing this, the wizard says that he is interested since he did not think that there was another person inside her and had never heard of anyone moving from another world. However, the girl assures him that these are just words and he says that's why he doesn't like it. When the girl told everything, she felt relieved, and the magician claims that he wants to study every bit of her magical power, and so he needs to train her first. The wizard claims that he has many opportunities to take a closer look at this magic, and then asks how much magical power she had in the original world. The main character reports that in this world she had no magic. Hearing this, he says that he is even more curious to know what kind of magical abilities she has because he believes that there is no magic, but there is a soul that has magic. He says that he has too little information, and then asks if the Marquise can tell her more about the other world. At this time, the girl thought that he was really obsessed with magic and replied that she would tell him. The doctor believes that special training is needed first, and then explains that if her magic gets out of control, it will kill her without him even hearing it. And what, what will she say? and then he invites her to prepare for Sparta. Hearing this, the girl does not understand how she missed such a dangerous person. A month later, the wizard reports that that's all for today. And after all the training, the main character thought that magic is also physical strength and a complete fight club. The wizard asks if she feels stronger. Christina replies that she has figured out how to mix the magical power in her body. And the teacher says that there shouldn't be an unexpected explosion of magic now, since they've come this far. Hearing this, this girl asks if it is true. And at that time, I thought that the difficult days were finally behind me. However, the magician offers to continue training to the level of supreme wizards. And then he says that they still have more to come. Suddenly, a young gentleman approaches them and tells them that he doesn't think Christina agrees. And then he claims that if the training is over, then you can go home. The wizard says that he will come again to see her. And then he says that if she skips training, she will forget how to use magic. And at this time, the main character thought that the magic turned out to be heavier than she had expected. Cedric tells the magician that he is simply using an excuse for Togo to do whatever he wants in his house, because he believes that he eats anything, sleeps anywhere, and does anything. Hearing this, the girl thought that the gentleman was right, since the magician does everything in his own way. However, the wizard objects and says that he is wrong, since he is very serious about Christina. And then he turns to the girl and says that he thinks he will never get tired of being around her. Christina claims that he was joking again, and at that time she thought that he just wanted to study her magical power. The magician considers to show what they have achieved, he offers to heal the wound on Cedric's hand. Hearing this, the young master asks in surprise how he knew about this. The man explains that he accidentally saw him fighting with the servants with swords. And then he says that this doesn't usually happen, and asks that he must have missed something. At this time, the main character reports that she can, and then invites Cedric to extend his hand to her. The magician reports that this is healing magic, and to see it is rare. The girl says that she will take off the bandage. And when she saw the wound, she thought that it looked painful. Cedric explains that this happens often in this wound. There is nothing to worry about. However, the girl thought that she shouldn't exist anyway and she should fix it. 
When she touched the wound, the magician who was watching all this saw the light, and for him, it turned out to be incredible. And then he tells the gentleman that he is just like new. The wizard invites Cedric to take off his clothes. Hearing this, the girl turned away, and the magician reports that everything is intact, and Cedric says that not only his arm passed through, but his whole body. Hearing this, the main character was surprised, and the magician said that he couldn't do that, and he realizes that this is not as it is written in the book, and then he asks if it could be that Christina is from another planet. When the time came to write a report to the prince about Christina, Cedric thought that Christina had changed as a person. And then he writes that if there is any progress, he will inform Philip about it. I read this letter. The man thought that this girl was repenting, and she was capable of it. And then he squeezes the paper and says that he will meet with her in person, and therefore she must prepare. At this time, sitting at the meal, the main character thought that the magician had a big sweet tooth, since he was eating all the time. The wizard asks Christina if she knew that sugar gives magical powers, and then he says that whoever is here is the best and most delicious. Christina reflects on the fact that since Cedric arrived, the table has become lively. At this time, the young master looked at the girl and thought that she did not like carrots. And then he tells us not to be picky, but to eat. When the main character ate one piece of carrots, she thought that it was tasteless. And then Cedric wipes her mouth. Seeing this, the magician asks what the two of them are doing. And the girl replies that it's okay, since it's just the young master's concern. The wizard was surprised, and then says that this is the first time he will come out so that he can look after someone with the face of a righteous man. Cedric claims that this is not a matter of manners, and at this time the girl asks them to wait, and then asks why they are suddenly so wound up. The young master explains that he does what he wants, and that's why he doesn't like it. The magician says that the truth is true, and he just doesn't want him to get close to the girl. Cedric says that he will do everything possible to stop them, and because he also likes Christina. And then he asks for forgiveness, and says that he has work to do, and that's why he leaves them. The wizard says that male jealousy is ugly. However, the girl, screaming, asks why he says this. And at that time, I thought that he did not like Christina when she pursued him and assumed that suddenly everything would become the same as before. The magician reports that now that no one bothers him, he wants to experiment. However, the girl says that she doesn't like it. At this time, the young gentleman, lying in the bathroom, thinks that he is jealous of Christina. However, he understands that she is a criminal and he should not think about it. And she has to tell him where the book is, and he assumes that's why they became close. Cedric reflects on the fact that he no longer wants to report her. Christina started weeding flowers and thought it was fun. It's also great to see the results of your labors, because he understands that this is completely different from corporate slavery, and compared to him, she is in heaven. The main character reflects on the fact that she is also well paid, and the more she tries, the more she gets paid. And Cedric also pays a lot to her, and at this time she understands that Cedric is all Cyril's imagination. The girl understands that she wants to talk to Hannah, but she doesn't understand why she's not there at such moments. Suddenly she looked into the sky and saw some wings, and then she heard a voice greeting her. The main character realized that this was Christina Rufunza's younger brother, Fonluk. Her parents intended to marry Christina to a member of the royal family and therefore began to look for a distant relative as an heir. And so her father tells her that from this day on, she belongs to the family of the Marquis of Fonluca. The girl understands that this is her brother, with whom she has a very bad relationship. The guy reports that he came to make sure that his sister has really changed and then asks what she's up to, and then claims that she can't just become different. Hearing this, the main character thought that this was not true, and she changed inside, and she understands that although they are brother and sister, suddenly Hannah comes up to them and addresses her mistress and greets her. Christina saw that the maid was holding a bladed weapon and asked what she was going to do with this thing. Hannah reports that Mr. Cyril's magic tracked the intruder, and then she claims that this man is an intruder. The main character invites her to wait a little, 
and then he tells her that she has nothing to worry about. The maid reports that she is the national fencing champion. However, Christina assures her that there are no intruders here, and it is not the intruder, but her younger brother. When she heard this, and then reports that he is not as handsome as she is, Mrs. Christina. At this time, a magician approaches them, and reports that he did not think that Rufons had magical power. The guy replies that there are people who can't do anything without magic, and he's Cyril. The magician says that he will also answer, and then says that he is a spiritualist who cannot do anything without spirits. At this time, the main character does not understand what kind of atmosphere it is, and why she doesn't know anything about it. Suddenly, a cat approached the girl, and she invites him to come closer because she wants to pet him. When the girl touched him, he showed her his teeth, and also scared her. Seeing this, the brother says that Mima should not do this. At this time, the magician asks the girl if she is okay, and then explains that they attack everyone except their master. Well, when he saw a frightened girl, he said that he understood, since it was her first time encountering them. Christina says that she has neither magical power nor the power of a spiritualist, none of this. The wizard says that he will explain everything to her, and then says that a person born without magical abilities is rare, and there are people who are able to see spirits living in natural objects. A spiritualist is one who borrows magical power by making a contract with a spirit, and that's why Rufus made a contract with Mimi, and that's why they can see her too. Hearing this, the girl says that she understands, but still considers it fantastic, and then thanks Cyril for explaining it to her. The magician reports that spiritualists are a subclass of wizards. Hearing this, the brother says that spirits existed long before the advent of magic, and asks if this is not so. Cyril replies that the value of things is assessed only by the history of creation, and besides, People were using magic even before a definition was invented for it. Christina asks the maid if the two are on bad terms. Hannah replies that they are the only ones not, and then says that there has always been enmity between magicians and spiritualists, and there is still competition about who is higher and who is lower. The wizard reports that he is satisfied with the conversation, and then offers to resolve their dispute with actions. At this time, the main character says that if they really start a fight, then there will be nothing left of the mansion. And then, screaming, he tells them to stop and stop. The magician says that it is a pity. However, the girl claims that there is no pity, and then asks what they will do if the mansion is destroyed. Rufons turns to the girl and asks if she is pretending to be an innocent lamb. And then he claims that he will very soon take off her mask and will not forgive her for what happened earlier, and then with the help of magic he leaves. The wizard asks in surprise why she is interested in Rufus. At this time, the main character thought that she felt like she had done something wrong and she needed to apologize. The magician reports that he can give them a chance to become friends, and then he shows her a place where magicians and spiritualists duel. The butler reports that this time he has work and therefore he will not be with them. The spectators were divided into two parts, and some screamed that the strongest magic, and others that the strongest spirits. Cyril explains that magicians and spirits fight to improve themselves through friendly competition, and it's such a tradition for them. Hannah reports that this is a fight that is sanctioned by the state. The magician announces that he will kill Rufus, and then give him to her for healing, and after that they can become friends. The wizard turns to Mr. Cedric and asks why he came this way. He replies that escorting Christina is his job. The magician asks if his work made him sit next to Christina. At this time, the gentleman thought that until he found out the location of the book, he would not let Christina come back. Sitting with the girl, Cedric does not say anything. And then the girl asks him if he is angry because Rufus broke into the mansion. The young master replies that he doesn't care and the girl claims that the garden is destroyed. However, the guy claims that everything is fine because her brother just wanted to visit his sister, and then he says that next time he should warn them so that they will greet him hospitably. The wizard calls the girl to see that her brother is next in the battle. Cedric asks if he really wants to go out. The magician replies that he is a previous winner and therefore will advance to the finals.
Cyril turns to the girl and says that he thinks this is a good deal, and he also reports that they say about her younger brother that he is the winner among the spirits. Hearing this, the main character thought that her brother was very cool, and she wants to see his skill level. The bald man asks in surprise if this kid is a candidate to win, and then claims that he will quickly deal with him. Rufuns asks why he needs all these muscles, since he is a magician, and then he claims that they are just decoration. And after these words, the battle began and Rufuns turned out to be the winner in it, and he also reaches the finals. At this time, Christina screams that she congratulates her brother, because he is very cool. However, the magician assures her that it is too early to celebrate, since the semi-finals will begin soon, and he announces that he will fight next. The wizard asks the Marquise that if he wins, will he receive a reward from her? At this time, the young master suggests that Christine not listen to him. At this time, the wizard looked at the girl and said that he would take this as a promise and then goes to compete. At this time, the main character does not understand anything, and she is wondering what kind of reward we are talking about. After the finale, the man reports that the person who has earned the title of winner among magicians is Cyril, and against him is an outstanding spiritualist with remarkable strength and a good reputation, Rufus. Hearing this, the main character says that these two are quite popular, and Hannah claims that the person behind them is also popular and she is also famous. Hearing this, Christina claims that this is a lie, and she is just a fan of shirking work. When the competition began, the main character thought that her brother should fight with all his might. After all, she understands that otherwise she will owe the magician for his reward, and she doesn't know what he wants from her. The wizard turns to the guy and says that if he doesn't defend himself, he'll be finished. He uses his magic with it. At this time, a large stone flew near the main character, but Cedric reacted in time who took the girl. Christina looked at the place where she stood and saw a large stone. And then she thanked the master, because if not for him, this stone would have crushed her. Cedric invites the girl to stay as close to him as possible. At this time, Cyril asks Rufunce if he wants to say that they are better than magicians, and then he says that he is already tired of hearing this. At this time, Rufunce thought that they had always been like this. Rufunce recalls that when he was little, he was teased by magicians who took the book from him and claimed that she did not need it, because he doesn't have magic. And he also remembers his sister who asked why he was reading this book again, and suggested that he stop, since it was useless. The guy replied that he knew about it, but still also wanted to use magic. Cyril, who is holding the book in his hands, asks if this is her side book, and then gives it to him. And at this time, the boy thought that it was cool to have magic at such an age, and thanked Cyril. The blonde boy reveals that his name is Cyril, and he has a talent for magic, but however he is not an aristocrat, but he is going to study at this school, and then he says that he is pleased to meet him. Cyril asks if he is holding a book about magic. Rufuns replied yes. The fair-haired guy heard this and says that it's clear to him and this guy doesn't have any magic, and then he claims that no matter how hard he tries, he won't succeed. Cyril argued that it was impossible for Rufuns to become a magician, no matter how hard he tried. And then he offers to spend energy on what, no matter what. At this time, little Rufuns doesn't understand why the magicians are all so insensitive. And at that time, he suddenly heard a cat kneading. And then he touched the tree, and out of nowhere, a cat with wings appeared. The boy thought that she understood him and asked about it. The cat meows and meows all the time, and then the guy offers her to sign a contract. At this time, being in the competition, the guy understands that he cannot lose, because he wants to prove that he has Mimi. The main character saw that her brother and Mimi had become one, and the young master reports that this is the first time he has seen this, and he wonders if other spirits can do the same. Christina reflects on the fact that her brother Rufus is still very cool, and then she screams for him to try harder. Cyril claims that changing his appearance will not increase his strength. However, the guy claims that he is wrong, and then he offers to look and use his magic. He saw a large stone. The wizard does not understand how he could do this and asks about it. Rufin says this is the first time they have teamed up, and don't think of it as traditional spirit art. Cyril does not understand how this happened, and then he says that this is why he does not like spiritualists. 
The guy asks why he's running away, and the magician replies that he doesn't want to be flattened. Rufun's Uverno reports that today he will change everything and this will be the end. However, Cyril says he won't get away with it. Suddenly, the main character saw that her brother's aura had darkened. Cyril claims that spiritualists cannot use their powers without spirits and the absence of magic. It is difficult, but they were very wrong. Rufun suddenly felt pain and fell to the ground. And the magician comes up to him and says that he should not close his eyes during the battle. The guy heard this and realized that he had lost. Returning home, the guy does not understand why he lost, and then asks Mime about it. Rufun's, saying that he almost won, but she took it and couldn't cope. At this time, the cat falls to the ground. The guy looks at the cat and then asks who is there. Christina comes out from behind the tree and asks for forgiveness, and then asks what he is doing here. Rufun's claims she shouldn't care. The girl says that may be so, but it still looked pretty strange. The brother asks if she just came to laugh at him for his loss. Seeing the cat on the ground, the girl asks in surprise what's wrong with him. But the guy again claims that this does not concern her. Christina turns to her brother and says that enough is enough. And then he says that this kitten looks like he's sick and now is not the time to be stubborn. Arufuns reports that he has spiritual fever. And during life, if the spirit uses too much power, symptoms of fever may appear. And if they intensify, the spirit will disappear. Having heard this, this girl says that it cannot be and then suggests that something needs to be done quickly. Brother asks what she can do, and then he claims that he will take care of Mimi himself because there is no cure for spiritual fever. Christina asks in surprise if he was going to watch her die. Hearing this, the guy got angry and then, screaming, announced that he could do nothing more. And so he decided that he would rather spend the last moments of her life with her. The main character reports that it is too early to give up. And then she lays the cat on the ground and uses magic to work on the cat. Rufance looked at his sister and thought that she knew how to use white magic. And he doesn't understand how she does it, since she didn't know how to use it at all. At this time, a maid approached him and reported that her mistress had recently learned how to do this. After all, she had heard that white magic was used for healing. Cyril claims that she specializes in restoration and therefore offers to leave everything to Christina. A few minutes later, thanks to magic, the main character healed the cat. And as soon as the cat woke up, it immediately ran to its owner. Rufins hugged his Mimi and then asked her forgiveness for giving in to his feelings. Christina reports that she is glad his cat is okay and then invites his brother to take care of her. The brother turns to the main character and thanks her, and then he apologizes and explains that there was a misunderstanding. The main character explains that she did what she had to do, and then he says that she understands that the cat meant a lot to him, and that's why she tried. Christina claims that the main thing is that they understood each other, and then asks if they can get along. Brother says that he can accept her as a sister. Hearing this, this girl is happy because she understands that he has accepted her as an older sister. At this time, the magician smiles, and Rufus asks why he smiles so much. Cyril reports that there was a great fight between them, and he was frightened by the skills of the spiritualist. And then he says that he shouldn't use them for magic. After all, he understands that this is impossible, no matter how much he wants it, and then suggests that it's better to try something else. Hearing this, the guy asks in surprise if he remembers their meeting. And the magician claims that this is why he is a genius, because he remembers even the smallest details. And then he says that magic is better than spirits. The next day, the emperor is informed that a guest has come to see him. And then a blonde girl comes into his office and says that it's good that his highness is in a good mood today. The girl says that she is Priscilla, the eldest daughter of Baron Eller. And at this time, the prince remembers that they met with her after this incident. And then he invites her to get closer to the point and asks why she came to him. Priscilla reveals that she wants to apologize to Christina. This prince was surprised when he heard, and then claims that she has nothing to apologize to her for. However, the girl objects and explains that she had no injuries at the time, but she still caused a lot of trouble and accused Christina of trying to hurt her. And then he explains that this is exactly what it looked like. The crown prince heard this 
smiled and then says that in fact, when she fell down the stairs, Christina was definitely there. And this is already proof of her involvement. Priscilla reports that she was seriously injured and did not regain consciousness for three whole days. The prince agrees with her and says that Christina really looked a little lost. The girl turns to his highness and says that this is a matter of feelings. And then she comes closer to the prince and asks if he could give her a chance to apologize. Philip reminds that he said earlier that an unmarried man and woman should not get too close to each other. The girl heard this and asks for forgiveness, and then explains that she has lived among commoners for too long. The prince claims that she is now a noblewoman and must take care of herself. Hearing this, the girl blushed and thought that she had done this again. The crown prince knows that Priscilla is a former commoner, and then he remembers that he accidentally met her in the city when he went out incognito. Her stories about life among ordinary people reminded him of the realities, and they met several times, but then he knew the wrath of Christina. At this time, the prince reflects on the fact that he has said many times that nothing binds them, and until there is progress in finding the disappearance of the book, he would rather think about Christina than about apologies. Philip thought that maybe he would give Priscilla what she wanted only when he found it missing. And then he turns to the girl and says that he will give her a chance. Cedric reveals that they have been invited to a dinner party by Crown Prince Philip. Hearing this, the main character thought that she did not want to get involved with him, and she thought about what anyone in her place would think the same, and then asks if she can refuse. The young master objects and says that the crown prince cannot be refused, and then he tells Christina not to worry. The wizard reports that he will be there with her little brother. Hearing this, Rufus was surprised. Max asks worry if he's always worried about his sister, and then he claims that's why he received the invitation. Rufus explains that it's not about her. He's just making sure that the dignity of their family is preserved. The magician says that he understands everything and then says that he is worried about his little sister and that's why he's going. The guy claims that's not what he said, and the magician says that he simply translated from his language. At this time, the main character thought that the two were getting along well, and then she turns to her brother and asks why he hates her so much. Christina always looked cheerful when Rufus showed up. However, at some point he began to treat her as an enemy. Guys, for a while, the girl thought that her memory... This memory of Christina, and in other words, she does not remember what she does not remember. Rufus asks Christina in surprise if she really forgot about what she did. And then he tells his sister that she brought him inexhaustible eggs and not only them, but also toads and snakes. Rufus turns to Christina and says that he always thought badly of her, but apparently she is much worse in communication, and just like an elementary school student. The next day, Cedric and Christina came to dinner with His Majesty the Prince. However, the main character is surprised, and Cedric asks why she is doing this. The girl explains that this is her first time in such a beautiful place, and the magician invites her to just calm down. Rufun suggests that the wizard be careful in his hands, and then explains that he means that he constantly touches his sister. And then he asks why Christina allows him to do this. The girl explains that she's just used to it and that's why she doesn't pay attention. At this time, Philip ponders the fact that Christina will show her true colors when she meets Priscilla, because he understands that guilty people always give themselves away. Suddenly, the main character saw a blonde girl and thought that it was Priscilla who pushed Christina down the stairs. Priscilla approaches Christina and then bows her head and apologizes. The girl claims that because of her, she was treated like a criminal. Hearing this, the lady with red hair tells her not to apologize, and then explains that she was not sent to prison. Priscilla claims that she was also close to His Highness, and it is only natural that Madame Christina might feel uneasy. At this time, the main character thought that it was true. After all, then she didn't want this girl to get close to her fiancé. The blonde girl claims that she put her in a difficult position and then apologizes again. Christina reveals that she doesn't want Priscilla to be suspected because of her fault, and at that time, I thought that it was she who was attacking her. Priscilla asks the Marchioness if she will accept her apology, but Karina claims that she has nothing to apologize for, 
After all, despite what happened, she was glad to become closer. The girl with blonde hair heard this and was happy, and then leaves and says that they will see each other later. At this time, the main character thought that this girl was not very good, and she did not like her because she behaved too suspiciously. Rufuns reports that this Priscilla also seems two-faced to him, and then Cedric says that he thinks so too. And then he says that if she trusts her, then so does he. When the main character heard this, she thought about what this means. She can make her own decisions. All this time the prince was watching Christina, and he understands that Priscilla failed, and I thought that maybe Christina really had changed. Philip approaches the main character and asks if she would like to talk to him, and at that time he thought that even with Priscilla she did not show her true nature, and therefore he needed to find out about the magic book right now. Christina looked at the prince and thought that he was a former groom who ordered to keep an eye on her, and then he asks what he needs, and at that time I thought that this question looked strange. Philip wonders how she can live with Cedric, and then she says that he is quite gloomy, and it must be difficult for her to be with him. Christina replies that they live happily, and everyone is happy. At this time, the wizard turns to the main character and reminds her that she knows how to use magic. And then he says that if push comes to shove, she can always turn to him. Rufons objects and says that his spiritual powers are better, and that is why he will protect his sister, and then they start arguing among themselves. At this time, the prince ponders why everyone is fascinated by Christina, and then he remembers that she burst into his office during the working day. Christina turns to the prince and says that instead of doing paperwork, it would be better if he helped her choose a dress. Hearing this, Philip objects and says that he cannot entertain her because he is working. However, the girl insists on her own and asks if he has heard what his bride wants. Christina reports that it is better for her to be in an open relationship than to be with such a fiancé, and then he says that it would be better if she married Cedric. Let's hear this, Philip, and says that she tells him about it directly, and the girl claims that he is much better than him, and Cedric has a very pretty face, and then she scatters his papers around the room. Christina tells Philip to get on his knees and collect his papers. The prince announces that he will break off their engagement. At this time, the prince reflects on the fact that Christina was exactly like this, and he does not understand why she is behaving differently now. Philip turns to the girl and says that today is a fun evening, and then she claims that she really loves such meetings. However, the girl objects and says that she doesn't really like such meetings, and it's better for her to get out, because she thinks it's more fun. And at that time, I thought that for a former slave of the company, this was an unaffordable luxury. Philip says that he will be visiting the theater soon, and then asks if Christina would like to join him. The girl refuses and explains that she now works in the London family's house. At this time, the prince reflects on the fact that he cannot come to an agreement with her, and does not understand why, so that he does not talk to everyone. Hmm. The crown prince asks Christina if she is living happily, and then she says that she is still being monitored and, depending on her actions, she could face the death penalty. And then he says that if she is hiding something, she will soon give herself away. After these words, Philip noticed that Christina had reacted and was thinking about the fact that he would find out where the magic book was. And at this time, the main character thought that he would find out that she was not Christina. And they looked like two people making mistakes. Christina claims that she has nothing to hide, and the prince agrees with her and says that he knows that she was an open liar. And at that time, he thought that because of her actions, he was now in this position. Cyril looked at Christina and thought that she was feeling awkward now, and then turned to his majesty and asked if it seemed to him that he was not treating the girl politely. Rufun says that to doubt his sister means to doubt Fonluk, and then says that he will not tolerate this. Philip turns to the men and asks if they are her personal knights. Cedric approaches the crown prince and informs him that it is his duty to protect Christina. The prince turns to the girl and says that it looks like she really has changed, and after that he apologizes. The magician turns to the girl and says that it was scary, and then suggests that they need to throw a hurricane into his room, 
and the brother says that he will make sure that weeds grow in his room. Hearing this, the girl thanks the guys and then asks them to stop. At this time, the prince turns to Cedric and asks what he wants to do. Philip says that he didn't think his friend would go against him, and then asks why he came here. Cedric asks if Christina is really connected to the book. Hearing this, the prince realized that he has feelings for the girl, and then asks about it, and reports that, given the circumstances, he is sure that Christina is involved in this. And then he invites Cedric to come to his senses and reminds him that this is a matter of life for their country. Cedric reflects on the fact that he simply became attached to Christina. Uh, he also knows about the danger of the magic book, but does not think that Christina is connected with it. The next day, when the main character was cleaning, she thought that dinner was terrifying. And it's good that Christina broke off the engagement, otherwise she was somehow afraid of this man. Suddenly the girl saw Mrs. Priscilla and came up to her and said that she was glad because they could talk. The girl explains that she came to meet Mr. Cedric, but he does not let her in. The butler says he can't let her in without prior arrangement. Priscilla takes the main character by the hands and then asks her to help her, since she came all the way to see her. Christina asks if she knows Mr. Cedric, and then I thought that at first she was afraid of him, but now he has become kinder, and from the outside it is so noticeable. Sebastian asks Mrs. Christina if she knows this lady. She replies that this is Priscilla, the daughter of Baron Eller, and then the blonde girl introduces herself. The butler says that it doesn't sound like a lie, but even though many people know it, he still has to notify the master about it. Priscilla heard this, asks if he can talk, and then turns to the main character and asks if she can take her in, and then she says that she and Cedric are good friends. Hearing this, the main character thought that this was not true, but she understands that she needs to calm down. The butler reports that he has received approval. Hearing this, Christina asks the guest whether to accompany her, and she agrees. At this time, Cedric remembers the words of the prince, and then he wondered what Philip would answer if he said that he was sane. Christina enters the office and reports that Mrs. Priscilla has arrived. The young master says that the butler warned him. The blonde girl thanks Christina for guiding her through and then informs her that she no longer needs her help. The main character says that she is leaving. When Marquise left the office, she thought that she had just been kicked out. But suddenly she objects and reflects on the fact that just two people want to talk and this is just a conversation between two people. Christina realizes that Priscilla is popular among men and thinks that maybe Cedric won't be able to resist her. And then he remembers that this has not happened in history, and therefore cannot happen. The main character thinks that, on the other hand, Priscilla knew the crown prince well, and this means that she must also be familiar with Cedric. But she realized that at this time she was confused. The blonde girl turns to Mr. Cedric and says that she is very glad to meet them, and then she says that she really wanted to talk to him alone, and then she takes his hand. The young master takes his hand back and asks if she touches other people the same way. Priscilla apologizes and then explains that she feels like he's become a little distant from her, and that's why she wants to get closer to him. Cedric heard this and said that nothing would work out for her, and then he claims that the young mistress should be aware of her situation, and if she came to him only to ask him, so-and-so then suggests that she had better return. Priscilla claims he is wrong and then explains that she wants to apologize to him, and then asks if he should keep an eye on Mistress Christina. The girl says that she finds it very difficult to look after the Marquise. Well, since she understands that everything is fine now and asks if she should return. Cedric claims that everything connected with Christina does not concern her, and then he explains that this is a royal order and he cannot influence it. The blonde girl objects and says that this is not true and then states that she is sure that if she is the victim, she will ask the prince and he will agree. The young master tells the girl to get out. The girl was surprised when she heard this, and he asks if she wants to be escorted out, and he wonders if she thinks all men are kind to her. Cedric claims that this is arrogant and he won't care about her, and he is not going to tolerate this in the future. And then he asks again if she wants to be kicked out. After these words, Priscilla opened the door and quickly ran out of his office.
Suddenly, the main character saw the girl in tears, and she turns to her and tells her that this is terrible and offers to leave Mr. Cedric. Priscilla reports that Mr. Cedric does not want to watch her, and he is just a knight who carries out the royal order, and he is a wonderful man who takes pride in serving the royal family like a knight. The blonde lady claims that he now has to deal with her, and that is why he cannot leave the mansion now, and because of her he cannot do so. When the main character heard this, she thought that Cedric is a talented knight who protects the royal family, and it seems to her that he used to go on missions much more often, and then she thought that he couldn't do his job because he was looking after her. However, Christina does not understand how she can leave Cedric. And he reflects on the fact that he was ordered to watch her, and since he has an order, he cannot disobey it. Priscilla claims that everything will work out if she leaves. And then he says that she should leave, and then Mr. Cedric will not have to take care of her. Hearing this, Christina says that she is being watched, and therefore if she leaves without permission, then the royal family will blame him for it. The blonde girl claims that everything is fine, and then explains that all she has to do is pretend that she left there on her own. And since everyone knows her character, she therefore thinks that many will understand this act and will only sympathize with Cedric. Hearing this, the main character remembered that Christina was a bad person in the original. Priscilla assures the girl that she will help her a little and tell her that she noticed how she left alone. And then you insist that everything will be fine, and she tells you how hard she tried to stop her, but she didn't listen to her. Christina wonders what Cedric said about her. The blonde girl replies that he said that she actually annoys him, but an order is an order. The blonde lady claims that she will be quickly recognized if she wears her clothes, and therefore thinks that it is better for her to dress like a city girl. And then he shows her the money for her escape. Christina took the money and thanked the girl. Priscilla, I'm sure everyone will be happy now. In the evening, the main character reflects on the fact that at first this place seemed too luxurious to her but she realizes that she was comfortable living in it, and she liked not only this room, but the whole house. And then Christina lowered herself with the help of a rope she made from a sheet, and when she looked up, she realized that she was being watched, and at that time she thought that she was finished. Hannah asks if she thought they would take precautions in case she ran away, and she claims that she is behaving stupidly. The young master turns to the girl and invites her to go to his office, and then says that he will listen to her. Sitting with Cedric, Christina thought about how awkward she felt, and then she took a sip of tea and thought about how it would have been even tastier if it weren't for that situation. The young master asks why she decided to leave. The Marquise explains that she thought she was annoying him. Cedric asks if Priscilla told her that. The girl claims that because of her, he cannot do his job as a knight, and then explains that that's why she decided it would be a good decision to leave. The young master reports that he does not understand what she is talking about, and then he explains that he didn't talk to Priscilla about it, and in fact they didn't really talk. Christina claims that he can't do his job because of her, and then asks if he's okay with having to keep an eye on her. Cedric explains that at first it annoyed him, but now he doesn't think so. And he says that this is for the benefit of the royal family, because he understands that he was raised that way. The young master reports that the first thing he learned then was to suppress emotions, and he says that he acted primarily for the good of the family and grew up according to the expectations of his parents. Cedric says that he hid his emotions and became the right hand of the crown prince. And then he explains that it's not that he hated it, but that he learned how delicious it is to eat with other people and learned how fun it is to talk to them. And he also learned that homemade cookies are very tasty. The young gentleman turns to the Marquise and says that he does not care about work, and he says that he values the time he spends next to her. Hearing this, Christina announces that she will stay. She doesn't care if she's being watched or not, and then claims that she wants to stay here and she wants to be with everyone and with Cedric. The next day, the wizard wakes them up in the morning. However, the young gentleman asks why he makes noise in the morning and why he comes into his own home. The magician explains that he entered through the front door because he has two more guests with him today. Christina asks what they are all doing here, 
and at that time she thought that Cyril and Rufus often come here. However, she does not understand why Philip came to them. The wizard explains that they came because they heard that she was trying to run away from home. The main character heard this and was surprised, because they already know about yesterday. Cyril reminds her that his hurricane is everywhere here, and then asks if she forgot. He says that he created them so that he would immediately know if something happened. Hearing this, Christina thought that she was indeed constantly being watched, and she would never run away again. The magician asks the Marquise why she suddenly decided to run away. Hearing the question, Christina thought that the answer to this was difficult to say, even to Cedric. The wizard says that whatever the reason, she can run to his home. And then he says that everything will be fine, and he will cherish her as his wife. Rufus at this time claims that his older sister will return home to them, and then he turns to the girl and says that she has nowhere to return except to her parents' house. The girl understands that she doesn't even have friends and no one at all. She knows that her parents were overprotective of her. And if she knew about this in the past, she would immediately decide to worry about her self-esteem and would take a doctor with her and no one else. Christina considers that she should politely refuse and then informs her that if she returns home now, she will cause trouble for her parents. Hearing this, the magician is sure that she will go to him. However, the brother claims that she did not say this. Philip asks why don't they talk inside, and then they went to the master's room. The prince claims that Christina tried to run away from home. When this girl heard this, she thought that she was about to be executed. And at this time, she understands that she will not be killed right here. The crown prince reveals that there are also empty rooms in the royal castle. And since there is no one there, next time she can escape to the royal castle. Hearing this, the main character thought that she would not receive a death sentence for running away from home. Philip claims that Christina is easier to keep an eye on in the royal castle, and thought that he left her with Cedric because she was interested in him, and therefore he believed that the girl would easily spill the beans. The crown prince ponders the fact that Cedric will not allow him to take the girl. At this time, the magician asks where his hurricane is and claims that he does not feel it. Hannah explains that she destroyed them because they made too much noise. The wizard asks in surprise if she destroyed them with her bare hands, and then an argument ensued between them. Rufus wonders why his sister decided to run away from home. Hearing this, the main character was surprised because she did not understand why he was suddenly asking her. Brother asks if there's any reason, and then claiming that no matter what she is, the Fonluk family is on her side. This time the main character felt confused because she did not know what she should answer. Christina understands that if the explanation does not satisfy the crown prince, then she will ultimately be condemned. Cedric says the girl is depressed about life here, and it seems to him that she just needs to rest. When the main character heard this, she thought that maybe Cedric would protect her. The crown prince asks why he couldn't have said this before she tried to leave. Cedric explains that Christina is here on royal orders, and she will no longer be able to get out of the house so easily. Philip says since he reads it that way, it is their fault for not taking action. Suddenly the main character saw that the prince was approaching her and thought that this was very bad. The crown prince gives the girl a ticket to the theater and then asks if this is a pretty good leisure time. Christina says she only has two tickets. Philip explains that she cannot be released alone and says that she will go with Cedric. Hearing this, the main character thought that in her world, this could be called a date. The next day, the maid tells the marchioness that she had been on dates many times before the engagement. Christina remembers that she couldn't call a tea party where they ignored each other a date, and also a walk during which they also did not see each other. However, the Marquise reflects that this cannot be a date. A few minutes later, Christina was ready to leave for the theater, and when young Mr. Tanya saw her, he was able to take his eyes off her. The butler invites him to take the girl's arm. When Christina got into the carriage, she thought that this was just the beginning, but she realized that her heart could no longer stand it. After all, she understands that they are just going to the theater, but everyone insisted that this was a date. And she reflects that she was so worried because that's why she was imbued with this mood.
The main character reflects that this is just a walk and nothing more can happen. The Marquise turns to Cedric and then asks for forgiveness for having to be a part of all this. And then he says that she would like to go alone, but she is still under surveillance and therefore he must constantly follow her. Sometime later, Cedric reports that they have already arrived and then he helps the Marquise get out of the carriage. When the main character entered the hall, she thought about whether she would like the theater. After all, she understands that this is the first time she is visiting this place in another world, and such a performance will no longer happen. Suddenly the girl began to wonder if she could get into it, if before that she was only interested in Kabuki. At the end of the performance, Christina reports that without a doubt it was amazing, and it was so good that it rivaled Kabuki, and it was magic, which was actually even better than in Japan. Christina shouts bravo and imperceptibly understand that there is no such thing in this world. And then they explain to the surprised gentleman that you have been lately. This expression has become popular among young people. Cedric heard this and thought that he needed to tell the servants about it. And he says that they will use this word when they return. After the show, the girl asks if they are going to the house. However, the young master objects and says that they are going to the city. Walking along the main street, Christina says that this place is amazing because there are so many shops. Cedric explains that this is the busiest place in the city. Christina invites Cedric to wait and then says that she wants to drink. However, the young gentleman assures that this is where he usually buys drinks and invites Christina to wait for him. Sitting alone, the girl thought that maybe it would be better to wait for him in another place since there were almost no people there. And at this time, she realizes that this is all true. It looks like a date. Suddenly, a man approaches Christina and then shows her the jewelry and tells her that he will sell it only to her. And at this time, the main character thought that a fraudster was talking to her. The main character says that she needs to go. However, the stranger claims that this necklace allows you to see the future. The thief heard this and the Marquise became interested. And at that time, she thought that it would be easier for her if she taught him to see, so that she would know what would happen next. However, she still feels that this is a scam. Christina understands that this is a world where magic and spirits exist, and this scammer who is selling the necklace wants to deceive her. The stranger invites the girl to put on jewelry, and then helps her put it on. Suddenly, the main character felt a loss of strength and that she wanted to sleep. The stranger is very happy because he believes that this girl was caught and his plan was a success. When Cedric left the store, he did not see the girl, but only the droplet who was lying on the ground. 